This is blood group detection using image processing of web application which is built based on IEEE papers. Okay, so we made so many improvements and changes to our base paper and we prepared and implemented that here to get a good result. So we made it as a web application in the end. So that web application will test now okay, how it will work. For example, here uh, we give two options. Either you can click on blood group detection using image processing or you can click here verification. So when you click here, it will take us to other page, okay, the next page. There you will be having options to upload the patient finger scanner, okay, the fingerprint of the patient and the patient detail, okay. So in that case, what we will do is we will directly detect which what is the blood group of that patient. Now we are solving so many problems here. We will discuss about this, okay. So before that, we will first see how it's working. And the speed uh, of this system depends on uh, how much RAM you are having, whether you are in GPU or not. Better if you have good GPU, you will get faster results. So let me upload this one. TB negative or a positive will take. And I will upload that image. And you can give the patient ID. So in my case, RS. I am just giving one random image, name Arun, age 28 and today we are recording this, so the recording date and gender. Now it will predict okay, what is the blood group of Arun and once it predicts, what it will do is it will generate a PDF for us. So that PDF you can take a printout and give it to Arun, a patient. Now I was again uh, telling about if you use this in your uh, crime detection project. So there we can add few more features. There we can make uh, the model which can detect age, gender based on the fingerprint. That also we are updating. Okay, that video will be coming very soon after this video. We will be bringing age detection, gender detection, and and preferences. Whether he was left-handed or right-handed okay so that also can be detected and which finger is used okay the fingerprint was from which finger okay and which and which finger in that much detail we can go and we can detect the information so that will be helpful for uh, detecting the criminal so you can use like those uh, techniques okay we will be bringing those next models and we'll be integrating with the crime detection project so you can see here result is very very accurate so blood group is A positive. Our model is working around 95% accurately. So testing accuracy is also around 92. So we are getting good results. Okay. Hi everyone, welcome back. This is Raju from Smart AI Technologies. In this session, we will be seeing how to build blood group detection using fingerprint. So now, before moving further with the code, we will check the base paper that we are referring. So then we will see what is the gap and what we are going to do uh, to make it better that is what will be our proposed system and what are the gaps are there in the previous research those things we will discuss then we are going to do that here so the base paper that we are referring is a novel approach to predict the blood group using fingerprint mapping in this paper what model they are using what data set they are using and how accurately they are getting the result so what are the informations are there so once we get the information then only we will understand what changes we can do now when you try to read a research paper once you try to go through it okay just uh, continuously read abstract and introduction like that once you read these things then what are the things you need to concentrate more is methodology what methodology they are using okay what are the stuffs they are uh, doing technically because in the end you need to write a code you need to implement it you need to present so in our case the most important stuff from this paper is we need to check observation and methodologies used and here observation and methodologies are together but 
few papers methodologies will be different observations are nothing but the people uh, the person who wrote this paper who observed something from some other paper so he mentioned that first then he tried he tried to mention what he implemented what what was the, his methodologies so with this paper actually they built their own data set using fingerprint scanner for three different blood groups after doing that after they collected uh, some fingerprint scanned uh, images they extracted the features okay what are the features they extracted are available here here they they actually listed out what are the features they extracted fingerprint length dw2 level on dw2 level two. that is finger size finger uh, minimum value thickness okay, like this they extracted these attributes from each finger so around 14 attributes they extracted and they then used machine learning model to classify and when it comes to pre-processing of images they done segmentation normalization orientation estimation Red frequency estimation and the Gaber filter. After that, they converted that into binarization. So, this is the image processing and the feature extraction. And about uh, they are mentioning like these many people data we are using, student data we are using. Uh, now, there are so many gaps here, and those gaps we need to fill. Again, you see. They are trying to uh, give us confusion matrix. From confusion matrix, we can get the accuracies. They calculated it because they are having very less amount of fingerprint scan data. They done it and they calculated it manually. So, if you see the F1 score, F1 score is almost equal to accuracy. What you call. So, it's, if it's 0 0.62, it means this model is working around 62% accurately. and uh, when it comes to modeling they are using multi-linear regression methods so their technique was multi-linear regression with ordinary least square OLS okay which is giving 62 percent accuracy so this model this is accuracy and the data set is they built it for some number of student and they are using machine learning for this process and they are extracting these features from the given fingerprints and then only they can uh, train the machine learning model here what are the gaps that we are finding so what is our proposed methodology how we want to implement it so few things i will be uh, giving to you now okay few things we are not providing so that will be under premium service where if you approach us we will be giving in detailed things okay what is the exact proposed methodology that we are uh, following but about models i will tell you okay about feature extraction and also um, about different methodologies of pre-processing of image we are not giving here okay now of our uh, model we are going with deep learning models under deep learning models we will be trying first with our basic cnn then we will be going with some of the best transfer learning methods for example i will tell you resnet 50 or vgg for example it's not like we are using that only we are using multiple models multiple deep learning models so we are getting accuracy around 90 95 percent so what is the profit of it the main profit is that our accuracy will be increasing to very high level then this base paper as we are going with the deep learning as our problem is image based problem so whenever our data is image and when you try to go with the deep learning uh, you always have a chance of getting good results good accuracies so that's what we are getting okay now 
now we will see our code how we are writing the code and which code i am giving to you uh, it's a level one code okay if you contact us under our premium service there are so many different stuffs okay as i mentioned there are different pre-processing techniques and multiple uh, deep learning models implemented so there are so many codes which you just saw the result on website that was uh, built using the best model the model which was giving a good accuracy we used that to build the front end and back end so let us move to that code in this this uh, this is the base level one code okay uh, that i am going to explain you in the first thing we are going to use our use all the libraries i'm just loading those libraries okay first i'm loading all the libraries here maybe uh, a c1 okay numpy matplotlib pandas and also model based libraries that is from tensorflow we are using uh, we are calling all the model based libraries if you are new to uh, this deep learning and machine learning we already made few videos in our channel you can go there and you can watch those previous uh, videos where we explain little bit uh, in depth what that model is and why we use those things like layer layers and what is that image data generator yeah, all those things are already explained so we are moving further with it now this is my data set so we have a data set of all possible blood groups with few number of images that I am going to load here and then once I load all the images here I am going to extract the paths of the image from 8 classes A positive, A B positive, B negative, A B negative, O positive, O negative, A negative and B positive all these class images paths we are going to get okay that path uh, we are uh, we are putting it into a list called file paths uh, okay and after that we are going to extract the label so whenever you see this image path actually the second element is label itself so from the above file path we are going to split and we are going to take the second element that is one zero nothing but first element one nothing but second element so i'm going to take out the second element of all image files then I am going to make it as a list. Now I have both input and my output. I use both of them and I will build in a data frame, a pandas data frame. Once I build the pandas data frame, I am going to check how many images are there in each class. So while you see here, A, uh, sorry, A negative is having more images than all other classes but the difference is not very very high in that case we call it a highly imbalanced data set okay it is also a little bit imbalanced so again we need to handle this all these things are done in our premium code so handling the data set and again in this code we may not having that much in depth explanation for example maybe when it comes to pre-processing when it comes to feature extraction when it comes to analysis Okay, those things will be provided under premium only. So here you see you are having the bar graph of all those things and A negative is more and A positive is little bit lesser than the A negative and all other are having lesser than A negative itself. So it's little bit unbalanced itself. So then I am going to split my data into train, test and validation. Normally here I am splitting for train and test. For train I am taking 75% of data and for test I am taking 25% of data. Then I am going to display few images from our data set. How they look. O positive, A, uh, A negative, B negative. Okay, Those images we are trying to display here. Few images from our data set. And then we are going to use image data generator. It is a library from TensorFlow Keras. Okay using this we are going to uh, this function is actually used to pre-process our images to convert them into arrays you can directly say like this uh, it will fetch our uh, real images and it will convert them into array format and image data generator is again you can use for augmentation process 
So using image data generator, I am resizing my images to 256. My target size is 256. And I am making them a batch of 32 images. So here train validation and test. And I'm making the images ready for that. Okay, the data preparation what we call. We are preparing our data for train validation and test. And for training, we have 4,500 images, 1,000 for test and 1,500 sorry, 1,500 for test and 1,500 for validation. And then, as I mentioned you, in this part of code, I am using ResNet Trifty, a transfer learning model. I am importing that model first and then I am making changes which are needed so that I can use that transfer learning model for my purpose. Okay. So here a notable thing is our output with a dense layer I am having hit. So whatever the things or stuffs happen before this, everything will be summed up and only the output of the final model layer will be 8 because we are having 8 uh, classes so our result should be 8 how much percentage which uh, label is coming okay. based on that only we can take decisions so then I am uh, compiling my model again here I am using Adam as optimizers in our premium we will test with Adam, Adagod okay. then we will do a research like stuff okay. which one will give better which one uh, is not giving good result like that uh, it will be a complete research oriented okay again when it comes to loss we are using categorical cross entropy and we want accuracy uh, that's what we should mention so during training what you want here so uh, we want accuracy under a matrix and then here we are defining my callback that is callback function early stopping for early stopping we are having that on my callback function so the main purpose of this is if we are running our model for 30 or 40 epochs, if my model model validation accuracy is not increasing from 10th epoch or 15th epoch, it should stop there. It should not move from there. So that is the idea. So we will use my callback function that is early stopping function. So in this case, I am not using. Okay, I used to use it, but here I am not calling the reason because in the, in the first time I we don't normally use callback functions. First, we will test with our assumption. For example, if I want to go for 10 or 15 epoch, that much I will try. If accuracy is not uh, good enough, then we will do some changes and then we will try 20 or 30 epochs. In that case, if we use early stopping, it will stop 5 to 10 epochs itself. So, during the research, uh, we will not be implementing. Once we we got confirmation, okay, uh, for those changes, if I go for 50 epoch, okay, very high epoch, then my I may get good result in that case we will use my callback function then we will keep that for training for a long duration it will take very very long duration so then what will happen is in that case whenever the validation accuracy will stop moving stop changing it will, uh, will stop there okay whenever it, it will stop uh, training we will use that model we will save that model in our case you see here for a research for a test purpose in this code in this part of code i am using three epochs but in our main code we are using more than this okay around 50 epoch okay with early stop so it will stop around uh, i don't remember exactly but it will stop around 30 to 35 it depends again if we make small changes again it will change uh, that early stopping will change whenever that validation accuracy will stop changing there it will cut off it will stop there at the training process once the training is done the model will be saved here okay once this model is saved we are going to print accuracy and losses of that model again you can see how validation accuracy is changing validation accuracy uh, in the first epoch it was not that much uh, changing stuff after that it is getting increased validation accuracy is getting increased if you train it for 50 epoch or like that we will get in detail how this validation accuracy will improve further here it is around uh, 74 75 but when you train it using proper image processing and proper model we are bringing it around 95 as i mentioned
so again here validation accuracy 75 percent in our case it will be 90 to 93 percent and classification report this you saw on that research paper too but that was very small so here you can see they were calculating the f1 score and what was their f1 score 68 percent so what is our f1 score it is 75 percent but our main code which we train for 50 epoch with the changes it is giving better than this so again we implemented that we tested that model which we built on some sample images and it is giving almost accurate result and here you see a b positive but prediction a b negative this is only uh, one uh, problem here and also we will be having few more because we trained only for three epoch okay three epoch is nothing we need to train minimum 50 five zero epoch or like that so again in the end you can see proof was a negative but the prediction was a b negative and also b positive it is telling that a b positive so the thing is if you train for more epoch there is a possibility of getting better result and also you should remember there are problem like uh, over training and under training okay so that also you need to check it's not like okay if you train for 100 epoch it should increase to a very high level there are some conditions okay we will discuss about it uh, in further videos what will happen what is that uh, under training and up uh, this one okay over training okay in that case what will happen to training accuracy and testing accuracy and how to solve that problem those things also we can uh, discuss and then we implemented it on a single image a single image then it will give us a result like this it means the first class is the, the possibility of this image belongs to first class is 98 percent and the possibility of it belongs to some other classes is zero percent so it's accurately saying this image belongs to zero class the first class this is a complete code once we do this once we save the model once we test the model we are going to build a html and css code for the front end with flask in the back end so then there we call this model and we integ integrate that okay then you will get the results as you saw before this is that website which i'm running which we tested before so now if you need further help or if you need personal guidance you can reach us so we are attaching our uh, contact number below you can reach us and you can get the codes and uh, the thing is we will be providing you one-on-one -on -one sessions and once if you register the project the whole process will be handled by us for example the classes will be taken accordingly what you want for example uh, it will start from uh, selecting the title or presenting your synopsis to the final presentation for your project till there we will be helping you we will be supporting you face wise if you want face wise we will be supporting you face wise that will be very helpful for you to the, uh, to present it better to your lectures and finally uh, that will lead to getting a good result good marks so it was all about today and uh, we'll see in the next session with time detection with uh, fingerprint will detect age gender okay uh, which and it was whether he was a right-handed or left-handed and then we'll see what finger it was okay. there are so many things that we're going to implement as a next part of it Thank you. We'll see you in the next session.